What is Aura 257? Well, here's the question that came in. Is it okay to shut the database down when I get an Aura 257 and then restart it after sorting out the space issue? This is the question that came in. And the, you know maybe that might give you a hint as to what Aura 257 is. Aura 257 is the bane of SSDBAs DBAs because it's this. When an Aura 257 occurs, what it means is you can no longer archive your ReDI logs. And pretty much from that point onwards, your database is dead in the water. You try to delete and it says, I'm sorry, the archiver is in error. Connect internal only until freed. That is a somewhat obsolete message for those of us that are a bit long in the tooth like myself. Back in the day when you wanted to connect a SysDBA to the database, you fired up a product called SVR MGRL, Server Manager Line Mode. And instead of doing connect slash a SysDBA, you would do connect internal. You were connecting to the internal parts of the database owned by Sys. So that's what the error message refers to, the fact that the archiver can no longer archive a ReDI log. And you're pretty much stuffed at this point because you can't do any DML. You pretty much can't do anything that would try get the database to move forward because anything that moves forward generates ReDI typically, and you can't generate ReDI because your archives are full. Even trying to connect will give you an Aura 257 archiver error. The only thing you can pretty much do is connect slash as sysdba. And so a common question is, can I shut the database down to sort this out? I've got a disk full, how do I solve this problem? Can I just shut the database down, jump onto the OS, remove some files, and I'm good to go? So I wanna talk about this common technique first, the thing of shutting the database down such that you can do something. And the answer to that is no. Do not shut your database down to solve an archiver internal error. And I say sort of, uh, there is no risk, there's no problem with doing so. You can quite happily shut your database down at any time. It's always gonna come back up again. It's very, very resilient, the Oracle database. But the reason I say, no, you shouldn't ever shut your database down to solve an archiver internal error is for two reasons. The first reason is unrelated to archiving at all. The first reason is just don't shut down. It's a bad idea. One of the reasons you pay the big bucks for quality software like Oracle is well, we have a very sophisticated thing called a buffer cache, which stores information from disk in memory such that you can access it faster. Shut the database down, you throw all that value away and it has to repopulate next time you start. It costs you in terms of performance. There's also a thing called a library cache, all the paths, representations of how to run SQLs, optimizer plans, etc. Throw all that away when you shut down. Now you've got to parse everything again when you start up. Once again, more expensive use of resource, slower performance. You've got an in-memory store perhaps, that's even more critical because unless you're using some of the fast start in memory algorithms that came in 12.2, what it means is when you restart, your CPU is gonna work very, very hard to repopulate that in memory store because it has compressed data in it. And more importantly, you're taking an outage. You're taking the database away from people. You could perhaps argue that if you've got an Aura 257, you've already taken the database away from people. But don't forget, people on the machine who currently are just running queries will so far be blissfully unaware that you've actually got a critical problem here. So if you don't stop the database, hopefully they can continue doing queries by and large. Anyone trying to do DML is gonna be stuck, but that's hopefully why we're trying to avoid this problem in the first place. The second one is shutting your database down is often what I call the road to ruin where you're being sneaky. Now, what I mean by being sneaky is you're not talking to your database. You're not keeping your database in form. This is what your database looks like. Everyone's database looks like this. It has a series of files and you have some database software running and the whole thing obviously is sitting on a server which has an OS. Excuse my terrible joke here. There you have some archived redo logs. Yeah, no, terrible. Archived redo logs obviously sit on the operating system file systems or they could sit inside ASM, but ultimately they're sitting on physical disk somewhere attached to that server, either directly or via network. But two things are aware of those archive ready logs, and in particular, the fact that you've run out of space. The operating system is obviously aware of space consumed. If those archive logs are sitting on a file system, the operating system is aware of how much space they're consuming. But also the database is aware, and this is where people often forget, the database also keeps track of the archive logs it's got, how much space is being used, etc. When I say don't be sneaky, if you just jump out to the OS layer because you've shut the database down to try solve a space issue, 
what you're really doing is liaising solely with the OS and not keeping the database in form. This is how the OS represents its knowledge of a full archiver issue. You might pick a particular file system. I've got, you know, this is a bit of fiction here, but I've just typed it in what a DF command typically looks like. You go to a particular volume, you can see it's 400 gigs of size, it's 400 gig utilized, 100% full, and it just so happens to be mounted on slash db slash archives. That's often a telltale sign that, yep, I am out of space for archives. But the database knows about archives as well. And just like DF is a critical tool for using at the OS layer to see what something is full, the alert log is critical for knowing what's going on inside your database. And if you're using the flash recovery area, then you'll start seeing these kind of things in your alert log. Once the database recovery file destination area gets to more than 85% full, it's gonna start letting you know. It's gonna start spitting error messages like this into the alert log saying, you know, you're starting to run a little bit close to the wire here. You need to solve things out. So both the OS and the database have feelers, connections, information. They're liaising with the archive log subsystem to know what things are full. If you just jump onto the OS because you shut your database down and start removing archive logs, yes, you've freed up space in your archive file system perhaps, but the database will be blissfully unaware of this. And in fact, it will continue to think that the archive space is full if you're using a recovery area like this. It's not good enough just to go pillaging through the file system to remove archive logs. So my point is here is keep the database informed. And the best way to do it is simply not to shut the database down. Do all these fixes and operations through the database interface. And then you know that the OS will take care of itself and the database will know what cleanup activities you've done to free up space. So what are the things you can do to fix or a 257 if the database is not being taken down and you're only doing it through the database interface. The first one is you can delete obsolete backups. You can go into Recovery Manager and simply say, delete any backups that are obsolete. That will clear up and free up space that are used by backups, which all sits in that same chunk of space, which is the recovery destination. Or if you simply say, I've got an Aura 257, people are screaming at me, the phones are running off the hook. You just need to solve this problem quickly the quickest and easiest way is simply to increase the recovery file desk size. If it's currently listed to 400 gigs, even just bumping it up to 410 is gonna let you archive a few logs while you now go do things like delete obsolete backups, perhaps move things around, etc. That's your quickest and dirtiest, or I shouldn't say dirtiest, that's your quickest option to simply get people up and running again. The other one is temporarily change the archive log destination. You can temporarily change the archive log destination if you're not using the DB file recovery area, the flash recovery area, and you've allocated your log archive destination to a particular file system, just flick it somewhere else. Leave that one full, flick it somewhere else, let some archives go there while you solve the problem more permanently in the background. A slight variation of that is if you are using the flash recovery area, then what you can actually do on that parameter is say the archive area points to the DB recovery file desk location. You can also then append to it say alternate equals and then another destination set in log deck archive desk two. And once again, it's like a piggyback system. We use the recovery file destination first. If we can't, then we have an alternate location. Once again, it's a way of temporarily pushing archives somewhere else so people can stay active and then solving the problem by, for example, increasing recovery file destination size, deleting obsolete backups, backing up your archive logs so you can now delete them because you now have a backup, etc. One thing I should stress is most of the log archive desk parameters have a facility to work out when to go back and see if a problem has been resolved. And that's the reopen parameter. It defaults to five minutes. So if you get Aura 257 and you rush around and you fix a problem with any of these things, deleting obsolete backups, etc., it's probably gonna be somewhere between one and five minutes before actual operations will resume because it'll be between one and for that five minutes, that 300 seconds, before the database goes, yep, let's go see if the DBA has fixed things up. Generally, in a lot of databases I've ever worked on, the first thing I do when it comes to setting up my archive logs is changing reopen to say 60 seconds. I should note that you can actually forcibly put that in a parameter. So if you've fixed a problem, you can simply say alter system set log archive desk one equals existing setting space reopen. And that will just do a reopen right there and then to make sure that you're not gonna wait that five minutes. But for me, I just like having it at 60 seconds such that I am always know that every minute I'm gonna check in case I've had a problem and then I, it's been resolved. So at worst case, I'm gonna be waiting around for 60 seconds. But overlying here, notice that none of these things 
are talking about heading out to the operating system. Common thing that I see, people, I'll jump out to the OS, I'll compress some archive logs, I'll move some around, I'll delete them, etc. All those things then require remedial action in the database for the database to be kept in form. I would much rather you go through the database interface such that everything is always kept in sync, your RMAN catalogs, your control files, and it'll take care of the operating system files itself.